this is two years ago i'm in my first year of college i'm 16 years old and i'm pretty much going shopping every single day the way my college timetable used to work was you might have a lesson here or there and in between if you ever have a break you basically were allowed to go do whatever you want as long as you come back so even if i had like an hour break a two hour break three hour break no matter how long the break was what i'd do is i'd bring a few of my friends together whoever else is on break and we'd all go to the shopping mall it's a 30 minute walk away now inevitably when you're in this environment when you are in a shopping mall sometimes this one thing will catch your eye this one piece of clothing will be look quite nice this one watch will look kind of cool and i started getting into buying more and more clothes for my soul now at this point i've already gotten into editing and stuff i'm editing these fortnite montages so i started in the fortnite highlight space where it's essentially like a game and you just have like loads of clips of the kills and you sync it up with music and i'm making about 400 pounds a month at the time so if you're not from the uk that's about 500 ish dollars so i've got a bit of extra money to spend i'm starting to work on my fashion like not gonna lie me as a little kid i was like proper i didn't I didn't really care about fashion i was kind of quiet i was like your typical little boy like who would just like be on the side like the introverted kid and as i'm starting to buy more clothes what i'm finding is people in college are like starting to compliment me now i'm not used to this because i think especially guys like we don't get fucking complimented much right so when uh, someone compliments us it fucking sticks and i'm starting to get more and more people just randomly come up to me first it started with my friends of them saying oh that's a nice t-shirt oh that's a nice jacket but then there were people that i've never seen in my life coming up to me and saying oh i saw your hat from there i don't know you but like that's a nice hat and it's these small interactions that are slowly slowly building my confidence and it was in that first year college so me at 16 years old that's where i learned a lot of my confidence my charisma and of course i'm not the most like crazy like riz lord or something right now but i'm a lot better than when i was back then if you saw me back then like if you went onto like dictionary.com and searched up introvert like a fucking picture of me would come up like it was bad so it started this positive feedback loop where I would go shopping, I would like get these clothes, people would compliment me. That made me more confident, which made me want to go shopping more. And it was just this cycle that continuously went on. So now about five, six months pass on. I'm still in first year college. I'm making about a thousand pounds, so one thousand two hundred dollars at the time. I've started getting into content editing, which is these longer form YouTube videos. You might be doing these as well right now, and it's what I do. I'm 16 years old, making more money than I know what to do with it. No one else my age basically has a job. And if they do, it's like they're working so much, they're getting paid like 400 bucks a month. I literally felt like I was living my dream life. I'm still going on these shopping trips. I'm still going out with my friends. I'm still coming back and getting compliments. But it's at this point that it just didn't feel the same. Like I would go shopping and normally I'd come back with like this high. Sometimes I'd bring the shopping bag straight to home. So it'd be after my last lesson. I'd come back home with the shopping bags. Like I'd unwrap all of it and I'd be so happy. But now it feels like I feel worse after I go shopping. I felt like fucking lonely. I felt like this emptiness. And that's when the first year of college ended. It's now my summer break. I've got like two, three, months off of school and one of the most fucking depressing moments of my life genuinely that period because it was after such a high where i'm going shopping every day i'm doing all these things like i'm spending time with my friends and then suddenly you're not speaking to anyone you have no reason to keep going out you have no reason to go shopping it's like it fucking ruined me and you might be hearing this right now and you might think i'm like some fucking out of touch guy you're like boohoo you had so much money to spend and you were still sad but that's not the message i'm trying to get across to you you're on this path right now where if you're watching my stuff your plan is to make a lot of money from editing and this is something that I went through and I really think that I would love to share my lessons so that you don't have to go through a fucked up period like that. Because genuinely, I don't think I ever felt as bad as that as when I was like fucking 15 years old. And when I was 15, like I was like suicidal and shit. So it's like, that was that level. I mean, after that, I kind of came out of that period almost happy because I was like, okay, if I can get through that, I can get through anything. So for a couple of years, I'm really happy. And now I'm saying I was so mentally fucked up. I'm comparing it to back then. As cliche as this sounds, and you've probably heard this before, but I hope that I can give it to you as someone that maybe you look up to or maybe you want to learn from. Buying materialistic shit when you start making money does not make you happy. And I know you hear this advice all the time, but the money you make will either serve you or destroy you. What I like to say about making money and stuff is I don't believe that money makes you a good or bad person. A lot of people have this view where it's like, oh, he makes money, he, he must be a bad person, he must scam people, he must do this shit. Or on the other side, there's the people who say, oh, he has money, I want to know him, I want to like get to know like things like that. So I don't think that money inherently makes you good or bad. But what I do think it does is it polarizes you and what polarizing means is that it pushes you to one of the extremes so you're not going to be like in this middle ground like most people and the more money you make you are going to change as a person i'm going to be honest you will change for the good or the bad and depending on what you spend on it will either put you into one of the most fucking depressive states of your life where you have more money than you know what to do if you're making more than your family but you want to fucking kill yourself or it can make one of the most fulfilling periods of your life 
you can spend your money in a way that not only makes you more money but you're able to live in a way where you're literally seeing the people around you so happy and like you're able to genuinely feel fulfilled by the work that you do the thing that you've got the actual money you're making is the same but there's such different states of life so there's three areas that i spend my money and three principles that i like to use when i'm managing my finances as i start making money as an editor i'm gonna go through them now the third one is the most important but i wanted to go through it in this order so the third one's most important but bear with me don't fucking skip to that shit yeah so for me to give you the first way that you should spend your money is spending on things that genuinely fulfill you and this sounds so wishy-washy and i know you want to make a fuck ton more money from anything just teach me the top five ai tools man malice just tell me like how can i get clients bro but trust me this will help you do all this other shit just please trust me first you need to understand why spending money on materialistic shit doesn't help there's scientists and people who like did proper studies to research all of this and they started to find what actually makes humans happy what they found is that the more you spend on materialistic things so the watches the cars you buying clothes you doing these things what ends up happening is your baseline goes up so it's like let me give you an example right just think back to when you were like 12 years old right you must have played like video games so it's like i used to play minecraft and stuff but whatever video game you used to play right there were probably in-app purchases on that game for fortnite fortnite was around while you were young and you played games you would want to buy things like skins emotes things like that and when you were a kid i don't know if you've had this experience as well but tell me if you can relate where you wish that you had the money to just buy things in game like sure it's like your mom might buy you v bucks here and there but you wish that you could be like all these big streamers and you could be like all these like huge youtubers who just spend loads of money on the game they get all the skins it's like i wish i could do that but like my family's we're not rich and shit in it, so i can't just get like fucking v bucks or minecraft skins whenever i want but you having like a hundred dollars a month you spend on that game would have made you so happy but now as you're getting older sure a hundred dollars is still like an okay amount but you're thinking like oh how can i make 1k a month there's all these entrepreneur stuff everyone keeps talking about this online business shit you know what I keep seeing people going to university and working a normal job. I'm like, fuck that. Like, I want to like, make money online. So like, okay, let me make like one, two K a month. And maybe you haven't achieved that right now, but take this from someone who's achieved it. And you can listen to the other guys. If there is someone watching this that's already at one or two K, as soon as you reach it, you'll move the goalpost forward. Okay, cool. I'm making one or two K, but now I think let me aim for five K. Five K a month and then I'll be good. Like, I'll be happy. You spend six months a year grinding to get to five K and like you achieve it. It was hard. Like you had sleepless nights. You had to reach out to so many clients. You were grinding you had to invest in yourself so many all these things that you had to do but you reach your 5k it's that magical number where you can show your parents and be like mom look like, i don't need to get a normal job anymore like look i'm making money it's consistent so when you move the goalpost forward again you're like 10k 11k 12k 15k 20k and you achieve them these might seem like slightly huge numbers right now but if you're watching me you probably agree with me when i say like okay those goals are quite hard to achieve but if i worked and i spent the time learning and i dedicated myself to one craft yeah it's possible that in a few years i'll be making that much money sure it might not be like like as quick as like five minute things from like some top 10 ai tools and this one eating trick to make you five billion dollars a month it's like obviously i'm not well, i'm gonna have to actually do the work but yeah it is reasonable that in a few years i can make that money but how strange is it that your goal is now 5 10 15k and a few years ago you would have been happy with 100 bucks and take it from someone who has already gone down that path i have made over 10 grand a month on multiple months whether you believe me or not i don't give a fuck you can check my portfolio see who i'm working with i'm working with the largest channels in the world and you can imagine how much they pay these guys are giving thousands not per month but per video take it from someone that started looking into buying watches that started buying clothes that went shopping every single day unless you spend it on the things that truly make you fulfilled you will just get sadder the richer you are the only way that you increase your life like standards the way you increase your quality of life how happy you are is by spending on these softer things there's this course called uh, this isn't me selling a course this is a free course so it's not like i'm fucking selling you shit there's a course called the science of well-being it's by yale university it's like a big university in the uk and they made this course for free you can search it up the science of well-being and what they talk about is what makes humans happy and they found with buying materialistic things it suffers from hedonic adaptation hedonic adaptation is that thing that i just described when oh it used to be a hundred bucks that would make me happy but now i get used to that and now i need a thousand bucks then i need ten thousand like your hedonism is just the act of enjoying stuff and like you pursuing pleasure that's how you could put it so hedonic adaptation is you getting used to it and the things that do not suffer from hedonic adaptation and truly keep us happy it's things like your social life it's things like you giving random gifts and acts of kindness so those are the things that truly make us happy and also there's experiences experiences are like going on a holiday you going on a trip with your lads you going to this one like theme park so you actually spending money to live your life those are the few things that do not suffer from hedonic adaptation because think about it even if you go on like loads of holidays every single holiday you go to is going to be different every single time you go to another country you're going to meet new people you're going to have new experiences you're going to face new problems new opportunities like it's going to be fun right so the reason i want to make this very clear me telling you all of this does not 
mean that you lower your goals of the money you want to make. The fact that you have goals of making 10, 15, 20k a month, I have those same goals as well. I've reached 10k a month. I'm trying to get to more 15, 20k by the end of the next year or two. And it's like whether you believe me or not, I don't really give a shit because so many people told me when a few years ago when I couldn't, when I told them that I want to make six figures a year, which is only like fucking 8.3k a month. Like people fucking laughed at me. I'm 18 years old now. In a week, I turned 19. I've already achieved that. So what I'm saying is that you should have these goals because it can allow you to buy genuine fulfillment and happiness. You having that money and spending on experiences will make you more happy. You making that money and spending on random acts of kindness. So you buy someone a coffee. Sure, it doesn't have to be huge gifts. But what the studies show is that you showing consistent acts of kindness. So you buying 50 people coffees over the next year. It might cost you what? $250 over the next year. Come on, like the average salary is like what? 20, 30K. Like even for like someone on minimum wage, 250 over the year. If you can buy 50 coffees, it's like every single time. Just think about how happy you would feel if you could give someone a coffee and they thanked you and they genuinely like, oh, thank you, man. Like you just, it was just out of nowhere. You felt like giving it. Money allows you to have these moments. It allows you to go to some random homeless guy on the street and you ask him like, do you want me to get you a meal? And then you just pop into like the next store and then you get him a food. Like it's these random things that make you happy and it also benefits the other person and that person benefiting makes you happy. And it's like the reason this is so important. Let me bring this back to like the reason you can do this for even your own benefit. When you're happy, you make more money. The happy worker is the more productive worker and the more productive worker is the richer worker. Just think about your parents right now. So my parents, like you will relate to this if you come from a lower income household. I grew up around my dad being like stressed about bills and it would be like he'd get into arguments with me or my mum or like with the rest of the family and I used to get annoyed at him at the time but the older I'm getting the more I'm realising that he was literally just stressed. I've talked to him about it and like financial stresses was why he wasn't able to be as happy. So you can imagine when he goes into work he probably isn't going to be as productive right it, compared to when he would be financially free or at least like the bills were all covered and he can go into work just thinking about work and it's like it's more in a loving way. Just imagine how much better you would sit down to edit when you're editing it instead of you thinking oh I have no friends I'm so lonely I haven't gone out of the house in a week oh my mom starts shouting at me my health is deteriorating I hate my body. Like, compare those thoughts and how productive you would be in that state compared to if everything was in place if you had just come back from an amazing social like situation where you spoke so confidently with all these people you met a new person you bought them a random coffee the waiter said hi to you she was like amazing she was just so like present and with you she was just kind to you and you are respected by so many people you know that your health is in check you've had good sleep you have the money to buy healthy food instead of you buying like cheap junk food you're able to buy like organic genuinely like food that actually is unprocessed and maybe it's a bit more expensive but you're able to afford it when you have all these things going for you how much more productive are you going to be in your work probably a lot more right and when you are more productive you make more money which allows you to spend more on these fulfilling things and it's this beautiful cycle where you spending on less materialistic things but more things that genuinely bring you fulfillment you realize that the money you make it doesn't have to be like dirty evil so many people have like this nasty feeling towards money you realize that the money you make can genuinely serve both you and the lifestyle you want to live and also the rest of the world the second thing we want to spend our money on is increasing our income potential so income potential just means how much are your skills worth how much are you able to bring in every single month like you being a more valuable person will make more money so us investing in you being able to make more money is an obvious investment because this sounds so stupid and you will listen to me and you will agree with me i know you will agree with me but you're going to realize that so many other people are actually so retarded but if i told you that the easiest way to make more money if you want to be financially free if you want to get rich if you want to like live a life where money is no longer the constraint and it's not on your head where you can retire your parents and you can genuinely live every day like how you want if i told you the easiest way to live a life like that and how to make more money is to increase how much money you make you would think that is the most stupid advice that i could ever give but then at the same time you look at all the people around you you're probably quite a young guy like me look at the people around you think about that guy that has the entrepreneurial mindset maybe like one out of like a hundred guys actually thinks about making money and shit at this age and even out of the few guys you know half of them are like oh i'm gonna get into stocks forex i'm gonna start trading but what they don't understand is that these stocks these investments they work as a multiplier you don't get rich by investing in these traditional ways the richest people you know these like millionaires billionaires they didn't get rich by diversifying their income the way they got rich is through one thing and then later on when they had the money they multiplied it through things like stocks through things like forex through things like trading but what these guys are trying to do is they're making nothing or they're making like 400 500 a thousand a month from their normal job and what they're saying is i'm going to multiply this by 2x in the next 10 15 years they see these means of investment as passive income as like oh this free money pretty much but they don't realize that bro this market pretty much goes up by like, i haven't done like all the research but i'm pretty sure it goes up by like three to five percent every single year so you're telling me that let's say you put a hundred dollars in you're gonna get three dollars back from that over the entire fucking year oh passive income free money entrepreneur like look at me i'm fucking andrew tate man like i mean he's gonna walk into school 
cool with like the fucking the tight shirt, like the glasses, like I'm making this three dollars a year. Let's say even on a crazy good year, ten percent return. So that's when the market's grown. So you put in a hundred dollars and you get out a hundred and ten. Let's say you put in a thousand dollars. Okay, cool. So at the end of the year, it's now worth. Go on, do the math, bro. One thousand one hundred. In one year, you have made one hundred dollars. The only way that these investments are actually worth it is if you have such a ridiculous amount of money to put in. Genuinely, I have like a little bit of money put in there that I put in like last year. I just put a couple thousand in. I don't look at it as a growth thing. It's just like if shit hits the fan, then I know I have a bit of money left. It's not to grow when it will make money or anything. But it's like if I'm gonna get into stocks and trading and genuinely trying to make money from this traditional investing, I'm not gonna do it until I'm reaching like 15, 20, probably like 30k a month. So that's maybe in a few years. I find it so silly how I am someone. Okay, I'm not crazy rich right now. I'm making like eight, nine, ten k a month consistently right now. I'm telling myself that I am too poor. I don't have enough money for investing to be worth it. So how are you when you don't even have a fucking job and the only money you're getting is from like your mom's pocket money and that 15 pounds that you got on your birthday and you're trying to tell me that yeah I think that investing is the way to get rich and it's like I'm telling you that oh yeah I, I've got money in there it's like I'm telling you bro like I've got like a few thousand in there even then it's grown by like I've gotten really good trades by the way I'm telling you now I invested in like Nvidia in Cloudflare this isn't investing advice or any shit like I don't even care about it but I just invested in these random brands I have a fucking 70% increase or something like that on some stocks and it's like my average portfolio went up by like 40% so I've got a fucking insane return and even then I've put thousands in I still don't think it's worth it it's like I've maybe made like four or five hundred in that entire year and some retard right now and I hope this isn't you might be thinking wait you made four or five hundred uh, an entire year without working it's like you need to realize that you trying to make money through stocks is not going to work and if anything it's actually going to stop you from making money in any other business most people don't realize that when they put their focus into anything else it takes away from the main thing you might see stocks and stuff as passive but it takes a lot more of your mental energy your thought than you think because as soon as you start putting your money into stocks suddenly you're starting to check it every few mornings like in the morning you'll just check it the first thing you wake up when you're taking a shit you'll pull out your phone and you'll go into your trading app just because you got a bit of time and you're thinking oh it went down it went up oh cool oh i made 15 pounds like i've made 0.5 dollars in the last 24 years like you look at these things and you're a lot more emotionally invested than you think and just like physics says en energy cannot be created or destroyed only transferred so if you're spending your energy on this whole trading thing if you're spending 20 30 thoughts a month those are 20 30 thoughts that you've taken away from your business those are 20 30 thoughts that if you had them within the context of editing maybe you found out about this new outreach strategy maybe you could have spent that thought on you figuring out a new effect but now you're never going to have that thought and that thought could have been the one thought that made you thousands and thousands extra a month normal people don't think like this so you watching this you probably understand a little more you're probably a little more advanced than the average person especially compared to your age like you think about the people your age bro you're watching a video about how to spend your money as a video editor and as an entrepreneur to make a fuck ton more money your goals are literally more than the average adults now bring your focus back to the other guy in your class the average person your age he probably right now is just chilling on his phone scrolling on tiktok on instagram like on watching like some random fucking porn bro like, like he's watching like this soft core porn on fucking like instagram like most people your age just waste their day then their parents are going to call them to come downstairs to eat they eat like some fucked up food and it's like they're bloated now so now they're going to start their business and drop shipping and um i'm gonna i'm gonna start trading it's like and then they get distracted again and say like, you're the average person your age is a bum and this isn't anything against them like of course they can, they're free to live their lives but for me i hold myself to a higher standard and if you're watching me i hold you to a higher standard you, you should hold yourself to a higher standard than them so we're gonna think less about these normal people like the the thing that's sold to the masses oh invest in stocks things like that and we're just to focus on the one thing that is harder but it makes sense like yeah we're going to increase how much money we make so instead of investing in like these shitty stocks that give us five percent over the entire year we're going to invest in skills that quite literally could give us thousands and thousands of percent return on the investment alex homozi another amazing entrepreneur guys making i think 250 million dollars every single year right now he gave this story of this girl who was working like a normal nine to five job i think she worked in like retail just stacking shelves and stuff and she was given the opportunity Opportunity, someone offered her to take this phlebotomy course i think phlebotomy is like when you do like the the injections and stuff the course costed 500 dollars and it would take her an entire weekend to complete she'd have to travel out you'd have to pay for that travel as well it's like there's all these things and she's got the people around her, her family saying that nope the course is too expensive it's going to take your entire weekend oh you have to miss work to do that no but if you're going to get a train to that place then it's going to take you like 25 dollars to get it and then it's too expensive don't do it and she's trying to explain to them that she's currently making eight dollars an hour and by 
by taking this course, as soon as she's qualified, she'll be making $25 per hour. She will triple her income by spending this money. Literally within a couple of weeks, a couple of months, she'll pay it back and everything after that is pure profit. For the rest of her life, she has this thing to her name, this skill, which she can instantly, she basically becomes a money generating machine. And when you say it like that, it seems like an obvious investment, right? It's like, of course you would pay, even if it was like a thousand bucks. If you can make that back quickly and then after you make it back, it's pure profit, you still hold this skill. Yeah, easy investment. But the normal person sees the number 500 and they don't think, oh, what do I get for 500? They think 500 too big, goodbye. My monthly expenses right now are higher than most adults in the UK make. My monthly expenses, so how much I spend right now, is higher than most people's dream income. And this isn't even like some weird flex, this is genuinely me just sharing like part of my business and everything, but I've spent thousands and thousands a month on things like courses, coaches, mentors. I'll buy like supplements and stuff just for my own health. I will spend on like creatine, protein powder. I spent like fucking $300 on this ring. I pay for two gym memberships so that I can go more consistently and I enjoy both for my social life and things like that. Like I spend a fuck ton of money and every Every single person in my life tells me that I'm wrong. I told my dad that, yeah, dad, I use this one software which cost me $250 every single month. He asked me why and he gets angry at me. I'm Asian and I think it's partly just the whole Asian culture, but also we grew up in like quite a poor household. So we would be like saving, like if we could save like $2 a month on like a certain service, like the Wi-Fi bill, we could go for like fucking $20, $20 to like $18. Like he would have done that. So it's like me saying that I'm spending $250 a month honestly scared him. And I'm explaining that, oh, it's because I host all my stuff on there and it's my website and then I've got this thing and then like I host this product and then it helps me market and it's like I make money because of it but he's like nah you shouldn't spend that money save as much as you can but I'm trying to explain to him like dad no you don't understand the reason I can make like lots of money is because of this thing like I'm spending 250 on this thing but it makes me four or five thousand it's like dad yeah I understand I just spent like loads of money on a pc but that pc will allow me to work faster which will allow me to get better at editing which is like of course you can work on a shit pc which I did I worked on a horrible laptop but as you make the money first from that shit laptop you work on upgrading it that's why you make the money first on the shit laptop, right? It's like, dad, this is the reason I work so hard. And now that's going to allow me to work even harder. And like, it's a beautiful cycle where you keep throwing money back into the business. Because there's two options you can take when it comes to investing into increasing your earning potential. Number one is that you do invest in it. You spend on the courses. Like, I fucking hate a lot of courses. A lot of courses, granted, they're shit. I'll be real. But the problem is, I don't want you to fall into a trap of thinking all paid things are shit. This is a trap I fell into and I didn't pay for courses and stuff because I thought they were all scams. And then I started paying for a course here were there start paying for mentors mentors are like people that have done what you want and you pay them money to basically shortcut the process so he'll notice one thing because he spent the years learning it and now you're trying to get that same thing but instead of you learning it over years on your own and having to research everything he just tells you the quick tips of like oh yeah i tried that as well that doesn't actually work try this thing instead and then you make like two three k a month extra with like a few hours of a call with him like i've genuinely spent thousands and thousands over the last i think three four months i spent over 15 no sixteen thousand dollars on like mentorships and like courses and stuff that sounds insane to the average person and what i'm saying isn't to spend that much but obviously as i've scaled it's become more reasonable for me to spend that amount but when i was starting it's like yeah i would buy like one thousand dollar things like i would spend at least a k every single month as soon as i was making it like 50 to 60 percent of your income at least the more you can make it the better but at least like 50 to 60 percent of your income should just minimum be going into you learning new things because the second option is that you don't spend the money you save the money yeah you save the 500 bucks the thousand bucks awesome well done you're a thousand bucks richer this year when you're on your deathbed when you're 85 years old on your last breaths and you're reminiscing about the last 85 years of your life and you're thinking about what you've accomplished are you going to be thinking damn when i was a teenager i wish i saved that one thousand dollars i would be so much happier if i saved like no the potential upside you change the trajectory of your life because this one guy teaches you something that you didn't know first the potential downside is that okay you spent a couple hundred bucks and it's like yeah you got a lot of value out of it but worst case scenario you literally get it paid back within like a few times and you don't want to do it anymore and it's like there's no downside this is my same philosophy with books it's like I was literally on a call with Brandon yesterday and we were talking about like books we've read and how we can improve the channel and how we can give editors more value so you watching right now how we can help you better. Something you talked about is storytelling and how I can become a better storyteller as a speaker so me buying books and me investing into storytelling coaching and things like that. So spending money on me like becoming a better speaker and learning these skills and we were talking about this book it's called Story Worthy by Matthew Dix. He teaches storytelling in verbal terms and how to tell good stories. I shit you not before he was even able to finish him explaining why I 
should buy that book. It was already ordered on Amazon. And the second he mentioned that book, I bought it. The reason being, worst, worst, worst case scenario is that I read the book and I get zero value out of it. Literally nothing, which is the unlikely case because book courses, you realize people actually spend a lot of time on them. So the worst case scenario is that you use it, you implement it, you get nothing out of it. Okay, you have lost however much money you spent on it. The potential upside is that this is the one book you needed or the one course you needed or the one advice you needed for you to reach that 10K per month goal that you wanted. The potential downside is a little bit of money that you're not going to remember when you're older. The potential upside is you live a life where you're so financially free that you no longer have the constraint of money and you live however you want. You don't work a shitty job, but you're going in nine to five every single morning where you don't even like, you don't even like the people there. You're studying and it's like, you don't even give a fuck about the topic, but your parents want you to. But imagine you just had worse, you're missing this one thing. And because you were too scared of losing a bit of money, you are going to lose all of that. People don't often think about opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is how much it costs you to not have an opportunity. Every single month you don't make 10k a month, you're losing that money every single month. In another reality, you are making 5 to 10k per month as an editor, but right now you're not. So every single month you don't know how to make that money, you are losing that. So the faster we get you there, you can finally catch up to your potential. Imagine every single month you know, I've lost 5k, I've lost 5k, yeah, I could have made 5k if I knew how to do it. You have to live with that. So when you see your parents like fucking struggling with bills, when you see that, oh, you want to go out to this place and you have to keep checking the price, like you go shopping and it's like oh i want that cardigan i want that hoodie but i actually can't afford it and i have to check my bank account you have to live with the fact that you know in another reality if you just invested in your own income potential that wouldn't have happened you would have bought all of that shit without looking at the price tag so a huge thing you want to spend your money on is increasing your earning potential and you can decide for yourself where you like decide to spend that money what i recommend find someone that you really look up to so someone that's gone through your same journey then learn from them i've spent over nine thousand dollars on like single people to teach me like a single person that i look up to and i just throw money at him to literally jump in calls with me look at my business and be like yep change that yeah that's doing good yeah do that thing oh make sure you don't do that your outside life there's this one person that you keep complaining about if you take them out or have this conversation you can actually like make probably this much more money because you feel up so much mental stress oh you're struggling in your social life oh you're struggling to balance your social life and your editing stuff and it's like oh cool just do it in this way fix this part of your workflow and you fixing these problems would have taken you four five six years to fix on your own but this guy's gone through it already he's done like that wiggly path he's able to take you from point a to b so much quicker how much money would that be worth to you so make Make sure you understand opportunity costs and honestly invest ruthlessly fucking ruthlessly to the point where people think you're insane on increasing how much money you make and the third mistake that so many editors make they don't value their time the average person has no idea how valuable their time is they'll spend an hour walking when they could have bought a taxi they'll spend time wasted on their social media they will spend time with people where they don't even enjoy themselves they see time as this almost infinite resource where it's like oh i spent two hours it's fine i'll just wake up tomorrow and i'll do i'll just try it again tomorrow it's like they have this mindset where time feels like this constantly replenishable source but the way entrepreneurs think these guys making a lot more money than you and you might disagree with this but i just want to let you know now please understand that if you do not make the money you want and this isn't even me shitting on you because it's like oh you're poor it's like, that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that if you have a certain belief and you think someone else is wrong but they are making more money than you and they are telling you that this thing works and this thing doesn't oh time is, you should think about time like this and you're here like actually i don't think that this is why right. i think we should change it like this i think we shouldn't spend money this way it's like understand that your beliefs have not gotten to where you want to go i make the most money from every everyone that I know and because there are some people that know the business I've built and everything they ask for advice they ask oh how can I build this thing how should I start and I'll give them advice I'll tell them that oh you can start on this thing just start recording these things start working on this skill spend two hours three hours every single day doing this thing and you know what they told me no but I don't think that I should do that thing I actually think I need to fix my logo no but I haven't got the business plan yet what name do I put I'm like bro this shit doesn't matter and I'm telling them this and they're telling me that no you don't understand them um, I do need to get a logo I don't have a business plan my camera's not good enough I, my mic doesn't work bro you've asked me for advice you've asked someone that has what you want i've told you what you need to know and now you're telling me from your own limiting beliefs that i'm wrong and that you need to do this other thing whatever you have in your head hasn't served you clearly otherwise you wouldn't be here asking me for advice so when i tell you now that your time is a lot more valuable and i'm going to explain it now i want you to have the mindset that please just listen to what i have to say because this isn't even just for me i've talked to millionaires that give me this advice as well you need to be very stingy with your time with everything else in life it serves us to have this abundance mindset abundance mindset is where you feel like there's lots of it so you feel like there's money out there like everywhere yeah you just need to get it. there's clients everywhere there's women everywhere like you can flirt however you want it's like you have this feeling where you have so much of it and you can just take it if you want but when it comes to time time is the one thing where having a scarcity mindset so you thinking there's not enough of it serves you a lot better you want to be so careful with where you give your time when someone asks you to go out and you don't really like them but they're kind of like a half friend like you low-key the only times you talk is like you make like shitty like fucking gay jokes all day like you don't even enjoy yourself you would rather have a productive conversation like you spending your time there you're like no i don't get a high other why i don't get much out of that no nope, i don't have enough time for that I'm, i don't have enough time like yeah it's a scarce resource you need to have the belief that your time is a lot more valuable and the magic number
number that I heard from like a year and a half ago. So this is when I learned it. $50 an hour. You right now, you need to value your time at, at least $50 per hour. And whether you're making that or not right now, that's not why it's important. But we need to instill that belief in you first. And then we will get you to the actual point that you're making there. Because it's not that we help you make $50 per hour first. And then we help you get the identity of a $50 per hour. And like you believe that you are $50 per hour. The belief comes first. Like if we wanted like this kid to start getting into basketball. So he wants to pick up a new sport. And we told him to practice every single day. Just shoot the ball into the hoop. And keep doing that every single day. In which scenario is he going to do better? Is it when he has the belief that he can do it? Where he's like, oh yeah, I might not be the best right now. But I believe that in six months, I'll be probably like one of the best that I know. Like not the best in the world. But yeah, if I train for a few years, I'll be the best. And I can get into these big leagues and stuff. And he's just practicing with that mindset. Or is it going to be the little kid who's like, I'm so shit at basketball. I'm never going to make it in basketball. Me being in the big leagues, that's never going to... Which version of him is going to do better? The belief comes first, right? And then the actions will follow. So you need to have the belief now that, yeah, you can make $50 per hour. Yeah, I'm worth $50 per hour. I'm not going to do things that aren't worth that much. And it's important I say this now. This isn't me saying that, like, the editing projects you take on are going to be, oh, $50 per hour, I'm not taking. That's not what I'm saying. Later on, yeah, genuinely right now, I've had jobs where if I worked out the hourly rate, it would technically be, like, fucking three, four, five hundred dollars per hour if you worked it out. So you can get there, but I'm saying sometimes you will have to take jobs below. But what I'm talking about is more your outside life. A lot of people forget, or editors especially, if you've come from like the gaming space, you'll relate to this. We forget that the editor version of us, so the guy that we present online, this persona we put on the Twitter, the YouTube, whatever you have, we forget that he is the same person as us in our normal life. So you watching this right now as your normal person, you are the same person that goes on Twitter and like starts talking to clients. You're the same human, right? So it's like, so that we can give this editor as many opportunities as we can, as we can optimize his editing life. We want to make sure that our real life is optimized as well. Because if you're not valuing yourself in your outside life, you're probably not going to value yourself or even have the time to do well in your editing life either. So you want to spend money on buying back your time. This is going to sound like a really weird concept, but if you've watched this video, you understand the whole mindset thing of not listening to other people. Buying back your time, what it looks like is if there's a task in your life that you can spend money on to outsource it, so give it to someone else, or you can spend money on buying a service which will do it for you, and it's worth less than $50 an hour or whatever number you want to put, you will spend that money. So let's say you need to get from like point A to point B, so you need to travel and maybe it's from school to home or something like that. And to walk, it takes an hour extra than it would to get a car, to get a taxi. How many people in your real life right now, if you started getting a taxi, taxi to go home would tell you that you are an idiot and that oh you're spending money too much why would you spend ten dollars on a taxi fifteen dollars like they would give you these beliefs right but in your head it's like oh but if i spend the hour walking i could have just gone home earlier started working and i make that money back fifty dollars an hour easy the reason i'm saying this is because i'm speaking from experience when i was in my second year of college so i was 17 18 years old i would get taxis to go from my college back to home so at the end of the day i'd take a taxi and it cost me about five six pounds so about maybe eight nine dollars i would do this every single day and i would have friends i would have have people telling me like oh why do you spend so much money on taxis oh i could never like they'd make jokes but basically they were saying that it wasn't worth it but in my head because i was already quite far in my entrepreneurship journey it was like oh no but it's an obvious investment it's only like a half an hour walk but in that half an hour i could have made that money back and even if you don't work in that time just think about how much more energetic you would feel if you didn't have to walk that distance because let's say that i save the money let's say i don't take the taxi i walk it home it takes me half an hour to walk when i come home am i going to be feeling energetic ready to work on my pc to do this editing work do this deep work session where i'm making money Money or am I going to want to go sit on my bed for a bit, go on my phone, kind of say I'm kind of tired, take a nap, maybe do it late at night, stay up late at night, and we'll wake up later. Say, I would have been so tired. Like even the energy that you get back by spending this money is worth it. You can make that money back. If you were 10, 15, 20% more productive because you were less tired from walking, would that be worth $5? Yes, it would be. Don't even fucking answer me. Don't even answer that. Bro, it's a rhetorical question. Yes, it is. These retards out there that will say that it's not worth it, don't listen to them. You're on a path different to so many people and people are going to put these limiting beliefs these minds that do not serve you take it from someone that's not only gone through the journey myself for the last three years i've gone through that journey where i started as a hobby editing fortnite videos i did my first video for five dollars got scammed for it only made two dollars fifty from it and now i'm working with the largest creators in the world i charge over a thousand dollars for a video one thousand five hundred one thousand dollars i'm around that range right now and these are simple like 10 minute videos that i would have worked on anyways back in the day for like a hundred bucks i've gone through that journey and i'm continuing my journey of course i'm still learning and like i'm teaching and even like there's so many new skills that I'm picking up I'm able to teach these things to you because they were my mentors and YouTubers that I watched that helped me and it's so beautiful it's so fulfilling to me that like I'm able to say like hopefully I'm someone like that for you where I can teach you and I can help you on this journey that you're on so if that is something you'd want you'd want to follow me if you hear my journey and you can relate to what I've been through and you kind of feel like yeah maybe I'm kind of young but there's a lot out there that I can go for and all my shit is for you bro like you're the type
type of person that I want watching my stuff. You can scroll down, you can like, you can subscribe. Go through our other videos. I think you'll really like them. And yeah, other than that, take care, bro. Peace.